Hi there, Tim here yet again. This is Advanced Voxelmancy 401. In this uh, rather pivotal installment, we're going to discuss how to use the nice clean corner point that we created in the previous installments and use it to create points in virtually any other location you could want. By the end of the episode, I will show you how to make this runner that I have here on the floor. Um, this is a haunted church I had been working on and I wanted the runner to be uh, raised, not flat. So um, rather than just you know highlight a section of the floor and paint it, I actually um, made a very thin voxel and turned it upside down and set it down on top of the floor right here. Um, and that gave me this uh, nice runner that I was looking for. And while that seems, it looks fairly simple, actually doing it is um, a bit more complicated than it seems. Um, so, uh, while we head off to the workshop here, I would like to say thank you very much to everybody who's been so supportive of these videos. Um, I'm really glad that people are enjoying them and finding them useful. And if I don't say thank you enough online or to you personally for uh, your kind support, uh, please know that I absolutely am very, very grateful that, that people are finding them useful and, and are enjoying them. So I'm going to take my corner piece right here and we'll just drop it down. And I'm also going to need locations for uh, five more reactors. So we're going to go ahead and lay down some basic reactors right here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and we're actually going to use two of these right like that to start with. All right, so while there are other ways to achieve uh, some of what I'm doing here at the beginning, it's very important for this particular tutorial that you do them in exactly the same way I'm doing it, um, because the top of a stretch line is different than the bottom of a stretch line, and uh, I don't want to explain that too much right now to take too long, but um, just know that you should do it the way I'm doing it. So what we're going to do here is we're going to copy this center, and we're going to go um, down one tick, like that, and we'll copy out the center that we just stretched. Um, we can do an undo, and we'll just paste it in to our reactor so we have a, a stretched uh, corner point down and then we're going to do exactly the same thing this way except we're going to go up so we'll go up one tick um, we'll copy out our center there and do an undo and paste in our stretched version whoops like that got some artifacts showing up on the screen right here I'm going to face uh, around until they go away we'll bug game uh, bug in the game all right and uh, so now we have our um, we have a, a corner uh, a line along the corner of our prime voxel and a line along the corner of an offset voxel all right now what we're going to do is we're going to copy those and there's nothing else in that row so we can copy them both at once and we're going to um, just use the our, our reactors here is the anchor point. So I'm going to go one, two, three up and paste those down. And one, two, three, four, five. All right. So this here, we're going to do a shrink on it, but we're going to do the alternative shrink, the, the minimalist shrink, the littlest shrink we can possibly do. Okay. Um, and then we're going to go across to here and do again, the littlest shrink we can do right there. And then we're going to fill those out with putty to get them back into existence. So one there and one there. And we can go ahead and copy those both again and bring them down and paste them right in there. And you'll see that if we do an undo and a redo, we've got a shrunk version of those two. All right. So we have a one tick shrunk version of our prime corner and our offset corner. And now if we take a shrunk voxel and we place it one above a voxel and one below a voxel, one, two, the one in the middle is a stretched version that's stretched between the two shrunk ones, right? I know that you've probably done this before in some other fashion. So um, again, we're going to select that 
undo a couple of times, get our reactor back, and just paste that stretched one there. So we're to, and then we do exactly the same thing with the offset one. So we're gonna go up one and down one from the center. Um, again, copy it, do a couple of undos, paste it back into the appropriate location. So now we have a shrunk center, a shrunk offset, a stretched center, and a stretched offset, each one uh, by one tick in each direction. Now, here's the principle that you need to know. If I take the bottom of the stretched offset and place it here, and the top of the shrunk prime, they meet at a point. And if I take the bottom of the offset shrink and the top of the stretched prime, they meet at a point. This point is one tick lower than the corner, and this tick, this point is one tick higher than the corner. And this principle, we're doing this with, with lines here, but you can actually do this exact same thing with other, um, with other objects. If you have two objects that are identical, one's uh, in the prime space and one's in an offset space, you can do the same principle that we just did with those. And now, if I take this exact same principle, I take my one tick shrunk, and I shrink it again and repeat the process, I can do row after row using successive shrinks. And rather than do all that right now in the video, we have an ex a demonstration right here. All right, so this is that same thing repeated 16 times, which gets us to here. At point 16, at shrink 16, it stops shrinking. And we then use the big shrink, the main shrink, rather than the alternative shrink. Two times, we can get two more shrinks. One brings it down about halfway, and the last one actually brings it to an imperfect point in the center of our corner right there. All right, it's not exactly perfect. It's a, it tends to be a couple of pixels thick, um, but it's, a, it's there in the center, and it's pretty close. Now, I can now take... Um, I can get a whole bunch of shapes here by taking a particular row right here. And if I take a row like this, if I take uh, this wall right here, and I invert it and paste it, I'll invert it there along the uh, blue axis and drop it down. You'll see, I can get my, I get a line, right? I've got a line here uh, that's in the center um, of the wall there, and I have a line that's in the center of the uh, prime wall right there. Um, and I also have a stretched uh, slab and a stretched middle slab. Um, and if I repeat that process along the entirety of that um, progression right there, We can achieve that. Uh, let's try that again. So we're going to go ahead and put that down on there. Pardon for the uh, just being neat here. There we go. So this is um, that same progression that I did, um, but I did it all the way along. And I also created here, I took each of these lines just on the one progression right here, which goes from the, uh, with flush to the top, to the middle, right, along that one line. And I actually turned them sideways and then laid them out in an even progression like this. And I want you to notice that that line is not a 
um, is not an even slope. It's actually a curve. And what that means is that the shrink is not a linear progression. What it means is that the shrink actually shrinks as a percentage of the length of the line that you are shrinking. And uh, that's both, uh, well, it's a touch inconvenient, actually. If you think about it, if this progression right here goes from flush against the top wall all the way down across to the center of the wall, then one would think that quarter of the way down the wall would be here in the middle someplace. Um, but it actually isn't. It's actually um, five shrinks in. And uh, the truth of the matter is that five shrinks in is a tiny bit, a tiny, tiny bit too little, and six shrinks in is a tiny, tiny bit too much. So achieving that exact corner seems like it would be particularly problematic, and it in fact is. Um, however, because it's a geometric progression, not a linear progression, and because you may remember that I said that you can actually do that principle that I was doing with the uh, prime and offset lines, uh, with other objects, you can actually take the prime stretch right here and the offset stretch right here anywhere along this progression and repeat the same principle where you take it, you shrink it, um, you stretch it, you offset it, you do the exact same principle and you actually get points in different locations. And what that means is that although I have 18 iterations of points right here, this is not all that you can make. I haven't done the math. I haven't calculated how many different ones there actually are. I'm not sure how many um, pixels there are along the side of a voxel in this game. But um, I'm just saying that you can achieve other points. And with some trial and error, you can achieve a specific point if you're just looking for it. I believe that I actually used... Um, the 12 uh, stretch point um, and then two large shrinks and three little shrinks got me um, what I have right here which is actually the point that is the perfect corner um, but I did it through a whole bunch of trial and error uh, about a month and a half ago so um, but I want you to understand the basic principle here. If they ever give us a voxel editor, a lot of what we're doing here would sort of become moot. But the principle of being able to use a prime space item and an offset space item and use it to generate other items that are slightly higher or slightly lower, um, I think it can be valuable even in that scenario because you can actually do it with three-dimensional objects, not just points. So the other thing that you should realize is that if I have a point at some random spot right here all right and I can pick any one of these spots so I take let's say this one right here and we'll go ahead and grab that out of there so we can see what we're working with so here I have a point all right and it's along the green axis um, it's been lowered you know a little bit right well if I take this and do exactly the same principle. So I take this point and I push it one tick this way. All right. Like make a let's try that again. Make a copy of it. All right. We go we go to paste it in. We do one tick to the side right here. All right. Well, now I have a line and it's centered in my prime box or it's in my prime voxel space and again we paste that in well now if I take that and then we can actually do the same thing in the other direction so we make a copy and we're gonna go ahead and paste that in and go one tick in the other direction and now we have our offset line and we go ahead and paste that in so now we have a prime voxel line and an offset voxel line that are down a couple of ticks on the green axis but offset along the blue axis and we can repeat that whole process and work out an entire series of points along that axis too 
and then we can take that again and repeat it along the red axis and therefore we can generate specific points at any point both inside the prime voxel space and inside the um, offset voxel space and what that means is we can generally create a point at any location that we like and um, I did say that I would show you how I made that floor. Um, at this point, you may have already figured out um, how to do it, and it's fairly simple, but I will simply show you. So if I take our, um, our original point, which is flush against the, wall, the, the top wall, and I take my one-click shrink point, like, like that, all right? So I'm going to take the... Um, the top of my flush point and drop it down on the bottom of my one tick stretch uh, shrunk point then I get a line that's uh, one shrink click long. Um, if I then take my green corner right here and I replicate it and mirror it then I get a slightly thick line that's flush with one wall. I can now take this, bring it down and drop it on my floor, like that, and you'll see we drop a few of them down right there. You'll see that that is how I made my carpet. So it's a, a corner point and a one tick down corner point um, and use them both one point for the bottom and one point for the top so then that principle can be used for all of these shapes I can now take various things and make them any thicknesses and you will also note that during my shrink progression as I stretched out my lines um, we also have centers like this along one wall of all sorts of assorted thicknesses alright so that concludes Advanced Voxelmancy 401, and uh, thank you very much, and I look forward to seeing you soon.